I was recently diagnosed with hepatitis C. I had a series of blood tests and a special ultrasound to see how much damage the virus has done to my liver. The doctor said that I am infected with the genotype 1 of hepatitis C and that the virus has already caused severe scarring in my liver, but that the level of virus in my blood is not very high. I know that hepatitis C can be cured, so I really need to learn more about it. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Saki. How are you today? Oh, doctor. I have been thinking a lot about my hepatitis C infection. I really would like to learn more about how it is treated and whether I need to start treatment soon. I'm glad you want to learn more, Zaki. The appropriate time to start hepatitis C treatment depends a lot on the amount of liver fibrosis or scarring that is present in the liver. People who have hepatitis C but no fibrosis or minimal fibrosis do not need to start treatment right away, but those with more advanced fibrosis do need to start treatment. Unfortunately, those who already have liver failure, the stage of liver cirrhosis where the liver is not working well anymore, cannot be treated because there is a high risk that the liver will react badly to the treatment. Also, people who have developed liver cancer should be treated for their cancer beforehand and may not be able to receive treatment for hepatitis C. Based on your tests and the current recommendations, you do need to start treatment, Zaki. Doctor. Can you please explain to me exactly what the treatment is? Sure, Zaki. The current standard treatment of hepatitis C is a combination of medicines called pegylated interferon and ribavirin. Peg interferon is a medicine that strengthens the body's immune system to help it get rid of the hepatitis C virus. Ribavirin slows down the multiplication of the virus so that the body can more easily get rid of it. Ribavirin works best when it is taken with peg interferon. Peg interferon is given as an injection under the skin, one time per week. Ribavirin is given as two to three capsules that are swallowed twice a day with food. And what are the goals of the treatment? The main goals of treatment are to achieve two things, curing you of hepatitis C and stopping ongoing damage to the liver. Someone is considered to be cured if no hepatitis C virus can be found in the blood six months after completing treatment. How long does the treatment take? Peg interferon and ribavirin are given for 24 to 48 weeks, which is the same as 6 or 12 months, and this depends on different factors. First, the hepatitis C genotypes 1, 4, 5, and 6 are harder to treat, so people infected with these genotypes always need 48 weeks of treatment. People who have both hepatitis C and HIV also usually need 48 weeks of treatment. However, if they have genotype 2 or 3, which are easier to treat, they may only need 24 weeks of treatment if their liver fibrosis is not severe and the virus cannot be detected in the blood after four weeks of treatment. So this means that I will definitely need 48 weeks of treatment because I have HIV and I have genotype 1? Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Zaki. And what are my chances of being cured from hepatitis C? That's a very important question, Zaki. The infection can be cured in between 30 to 90 percent of patients who start treatment, which is the same as saying 3 to 9 people out of 10 can be cured. The chances of being cured depend on a number of things. The first is again the genotype of your hepatitis C virus. Genotypes 1, 4, 5, and 6 respond less well to treatment, whereas genotypes 2 and 3 usually respond well. There is also a gene that is common in Asian people that increases the chances of being cured. Another factor is the HIV status. People with HIV have a lower chance of being cured with these medicines. The stage of liver fibrosis makes a difference because those with cirrhosis do not respond well. Then the hepatitis C viral load is important too. If the amount of virus in the blood is lower than 800,000 international units per milliliter, the chance of responding to treatment is higher. 
It's very important to take the treatment as prescribed every day and every week. And we recommend that people avoid alcohol and using drugs during their treatment because they can increase the risk of side effects, which sometimes may lead to stopping treatment. Are there any situations where hepatitis C treatment should not be taken? Yes, there are. First of all, ribavirin can cause severe birth defects. So the treatment with PEG interferon and ribavirin cannot be taken by women who are pregnant or who are thinking about getting pregnant or who cannot use a reliable form of birth control during the whole treatment period and for six months after it ends. Also, hepatitis treatment should not be taken by women who are breastfeeding to prevent it from passing through breast milk to their babies. For men, because ribavirin can damage the sperm, hepatitis C treatment should not be started in a male who is unable to use a reliable form of birth control during the whole treatment period and for six months after it ends. Treatment should also not be taken by patients who have other causes of liver disease, such as heavy alcohol drinking. It cannot be taken by people who have ongoing severe psychiatric disease, such as severe depression or other severe diseases, for example, of the eyes, the lungs, the kidneys, or the heart. Then patients who have very low red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets in the blood should also not start the treatment. We usually check for these conditions through a physical examination and some simple blood tests, like we did for you. I'm happy to confirm that you do not have any of these contraindications to starting treatment. One other important detail for people who have both hepatitis C and HIV like you is that before starting hepatitis C treatment, patients should have CD4 counts above 200 cells per microliter. And preferably, their HIV virus should already be under control with antiretroviral therapy. Oh, thank you, doctor, for telling me all this. Can you also explain about the side effects of hepatitis C treatment? It's good you asked. It's very important to know what side effects can happen with hepatitis C treatment. Most patients usually experience at least one type of side effect. Most of them are not severe, and they can get better over time. The most common side effects include flu-like symptoms, for example, fever, chills, muscle aches, headaches, being tired, skin reactions at the site of PEG interferon injections, such as redness, swelling, and itching, skin dryness and itchiness over the body, problems with mood like irritability and low mood, difficulties with sleep, appetite changes such as nausea, loss of appetite, and taste changes, vomiting, weight loss, thyroid problems, and anemia or low white blood cells. However, serious side effects can occur and can include, for example, mental health issues such as depression, being anxious, and having thoughts of suicide, severe anemia, severe drop in the number of white blood cells, which increases the risk of other infections, severe drop in the amount of platelets in the blood, which increases the risk of bleeding, and heart problems. There are things that you and we can do together to reduce the risks of side effects and to help you cope with them. The nurse will discuss this in more detail with you if you are ready to start treatment. This has all been very helpful, doctor. Thank you. So if I think I am ready, would I be able to start treatment? Yes, Saki. You are eligible for treatment, but please take your time to make your decision about whether it is the best time for you to start treatment. And feel free to discuss this with your family members or your friends. This has all been very helpful, doctor. Thank you. Good morning, Zaki. I'm glad that you decided to start treatment for your hepatitis C infection. We're going to try to help you get through your treatment course. The doctor has told you about several factors that influence your chances of getting rid of your infection. There is another very important component, which is adherence to hepatitis C treatment. Like for HIV treatment, it is very important to take your hepatitis C treatment as recommended by the doctor. You will increase your chance of being cured if you do not miss any PEG interferon injections or doses of ribavirin. You always take your medicines at the right time. You take ribavirin with food 
and you store your medicines as recommended by the clinic staff. PEG interferon should be kept in a refrigerator. There are things that can help you to remember to take your medicines on time. For example, for your weekly PEG interferon injections, you should select a day and time that is convenient for you. I'm going to give you a record card with a calendar to help you keep track of your PEG interferon injections. You may also want to put an alarm on your phone or a clock to help you remember to take your weekly injection and your twice daily ribavirin capsules on time. You may already be doing this to remind you to take your HIV medicines. If possible, it could be helpful to ask a family member or a friend to remind you to take your injections and your ribavirin too. Thank you, this is very useful. What if I forget to take my hepatitis C medications or if I vomit after taking ribavirin? If you miss a dose of PEG interferon, you should get the missed injection as soon as possible during the same day or the next day. If that happens, do not change your regular PEG interferon schedule. You should just continue your next injection on the usual day. However, if several days go by after you miss a dose, check with the clinic about what to do. Do not double the next dose or take more than one dose a week without talking to the doctor. If you miss a dose of ribavirin, take the missed dose as soon as possible. But if more than six hours have passed after you were supposed to take a dose, take your next dose of ribavirin as scheduled and do not double that dose. If you vomit within 60 minutes after taking your ribavirin, you should take another dose as soon as you can. If you vomit a second time, do not take an additional dose and call the clinic. The doctor said that there can be side effects from the treatment. Is there a way I can prevent them or reduce them? It's a very important question, Zaki. Yes, there are ways to reduce the side effects. This will not only help you to feel better, but will also increase your chances of completing the treatment and being cured of hepatitis C. Please keep a record of side effects that you may experience so that you can accurately report them to the doctor at your next visit. Side effects are often what make people want to skip some doses or stop treatment, but most side effects can be managed effectively if treated before they become severe. The most common side effects of PEG interferon generally occur within 24 to 48 hours after the injection. So, if possible, you should select a day and time for your injection that will have less of an impact on your regular activities. If you experience flu-like symptoms like fever, chills, or muscle aches after the first injection, you can take paracetamol before your future injections and again every six to eight hours after the injections if necessary. Each time, you should change the site on your body where you inject PEG interferon, and you should not inject into an area that is irritated or red. For people who have had depression in the past, it is important to let the doctor know, in case you may need to take an antidepressant before starting PEG interferon. For some side effects, your doctor may discuss reducing the dose or even temporarily stopping one or both of your medicines, but you should not change the dose of your medicines or stop them on your own without a recommendation from the doctor. But you should also know that some patients cannot tolerate the side effects of hepatitis C treatment and may have to stop their medicines. Please contact us immediately or go to the nearest emergency department if you experience any symptoms like breathlessness, chest pain, dark urine, confusion, swelling around your ankles or abdomen, rapid weight loss, or if you have any thoughts about harming yourself or others. Thank you. I appreciate your explaining this to me. And can there be any problems with taking my hepatitis C treatment and other medicines? That is another very good question, Zaki. Let's talk first about antiretroviral medicines for HIV. Some antiretrovirals should not be taken with hepatitis C medicines or should be avoided as much as possible. It is first strictly forbidden to take didanosine, also called DDI, at the same time as PEG interferon and ribavirin, as the risks of severe side effects are very high. Stavudine, also called D4T, and Zidovudine, also called AZT, 
should be avoided as much as possible, as the risks of side effects are also increased. I see that you are taking tenofovir. Tenofovir and abacavir are generally safe to take at the same time as hepatitis C treatment. Then for people who take methadone, there may be some minor interactions with hepatitis C treatment. Those on methadone should tell their doctor if they feel like the methadone is not working the same after they start hepatitis C treatment. There are other medicines that can also interact with your hepatitis C treatment. For this reason, you should always ask your doctor about any new medicines that you want to take to make sure that they do not interact with peginiferon and ribavirin. That includes herbal and other traditional medicines. What kind of follow-up will I need during my hepatitis C treatment? At the beginning of your treatment, you may need to come to the clinic every week for your peg interferon injections so that we can demonstrate how to prepare the medicine and how to inject it. But as soon as you will be comfortable with the process, you will be able to take the peg interferon back home to give yourself the injections. You will be scheduled to come to the clinic regularly for a physical examination and some laboratory tests to see how your body is responding to the treatment. You will need to come at week 2 and week 4 and then every 4 weeks and later on every 6 to 8 weeks until the treatment course is completed. Starting at week 4, your doctor will check your hepatitis C viral load to see if the treatment is working to control your infection. If the treatment is not working, your doctor might stop the treatment. But if the viral load tests look encouraging, you will continue treatment as planned. Six months after you finish treatment, the doctor will do another hepatitis C viral load test to see if you've been cured of your hepatitis C infection. It is very important that you come to the clinic for all of your appointments. And you should feel free to contact us with questions or come for a visit even if you have no appointment. And one more thing. Although we will do what we can to help you get through your treatment course, you should also try to get support from family members or friends who you can rely on during your treatment. Thank you so much for your help, nurse. I understand now what it would mean to start treatment for my hepatitis C. I'm ready to start.